Welcome everyone, I'm Vince. And I'm Becky from The Rock Living Room to yours. Welcome, wherever you're joining us from, we're so glad you're here today. Go ahead, drop it in the chat where you're joining us from. We'd love to hear. Yeah, let us know. As we get ready to start worship, I just wanna remind us that worship is not the appetizer to the sermon. Mm. It's not something that we just get through so we can go about our days. Worship is this beautiful opportunity for us to fix our eyes on Jesus and allow God to tune our hearts to His as we give Him the honor He deserves. So let's pour out our hearts to Him today as we worship. Let's not rush through this moment. That's right, so good. And make sure you share this message right now so others can join in worship as well. Welcome Rock Church and everyone around the globe. Why don't you stand to your feet and let's raise a hallelujah together. Praise your holy name, Jesus. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on, church. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, oh, I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me.
that you're searching the earth, seeking those who would worship you in spirit and in truth. Those who you can trust with your spirit that you can breathe life into. The way you breathe life into the valley of dry bones. And Father, we thank you now. And we worship you in spirit and in truth in this very moment. We thank you, God, that you're moving even right now. Wherever you're at right now, God is moving on your behalf. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. We thank you, God. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through, yeah. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Come on and help me sing. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. We hear you, God. This is the praise make the dead man walk again. Open the gates, Father. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Jesus with our hands lifted up here I am down on my knees again surrendering all surrendering all find me here Lord as you Draw me near, 
desperate for you Desperate for you I surrender
That's our desire, Father, to know you more. Family, I know that in surrendering, we receive healing, we receive restoration. So wherever you're at, let's continue to worship. Lift your hands and just thank God for what he's done already and what he's doing right now. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. You are here in this place. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, let's sing together. You are here moving, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, let's declare together. You are we maker, miracle worker. My mom yeah, is that's deep, it. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, Jesus. in every Oh, 
Hi everyone, thank you for being with us today as we worship together. We are so glad to have you with us on this beautiful Sunday. I'm Vince. And I'm Becky. From the Rock Living Room to yours, welcome. Whether it's your first time tuning in or you've been a part of the family for a while, we genu genuinely want to connect with you. We love gathering together on Sundays and learn about God and learn from the Bible, but there's so many other opportunities to really connect and grow outside of our Sunday service. If you have a desire to plug into one of these communities, or even if that idea kind of intimidates you, we want to encourage you to to start or join a group here. Whether you get plugged into one of our San Diego groups or connect with one of our online groups, and we've got a lot of those, yes. visit sdrock.com slash groups or text groups to 52525. Yes, and that's another awesome way to get connected. But of course, we've got Life Class. This class gives you the opportunity to learn more about how God has uniquely designed each and every one of us and really how to impact those those who live around us, right? You'll also learn who the Rock Church is and how we got started and where our Save, Equip, Send mission is leading us. For our friends joining us from outside of San Diego, all over the world, we have an online campus specific class that we wanna invite you to. Also a special one day class is coming up on Saturday, August 28th for those who call San Diego home. To learn more about Life Class opportunities, visit sdrock.com backslash life class or text life to 52525. All right, well, let's get to the sermon. As we get ready to hear the sermon, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and pray together. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to hear from you. Would you continue to stretch us in our means of what it means to be a disciple? Help us to understand how we can impact the world around us for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey friends, my name is Ricky and I'm one of the pastors here at the Rock Church and I hope you were able to join in in that time of worship. It was a pretty amazing time. But if not, and you're just tuning in, we're so happy that you are with us together, not just with us, but you're part of us. You're part of our extended family, wherever you are, wherever you're tuning in, if you're watching this by yourself in a coffee house on your phone, or if you're all the way across the world in, an, in another time zone. We, we here in San Diego Rock Church, we see you as family. So I just wanna say welcome family. Uh, I've, I've been here serving with Pastor Miles and the staff here at the Rock Church for about 15 years. Uh, my wife, Nova, and my son, Elisha, my, my daughter, Shiloh. And we love being at this church here in San Diego, but we've also had an opportunity to visit some of our other locations around the world. And we just wanna, I just wanna say hello to all of our Rock Church family in Hawaii and Africa and the Philippines. It's so good that we get to be connected through the airways. Uh, today, I'm gonna be sharing a word with you all through, uh, through God's word, actually. I'm gonna be sharing a challenge and encouragement. Hopefully, you're encouraged by what I have to share with you today. And, and the good news is I'm not here by myself. I have some friends that are gonna help me deliver this word to you. Uh, so. Uh, they're going to be right here, and you'll see them throughout the, our time together. Uh, you know, my wife and I, about two years ago, uh, we decided to start this YouTube channel, and we called it Marriaging. We've celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary last year in 2020. And together, collectively, I, I've been married to this woman for half of my life. I turned 50. Crazy. And, and on that 25th wedding anniversary, we decided we need to... We need to encourage marriages. We believe in marriage. We enjoy marriage. We enjoy each other. And so we started a YouTube channel. It's called Marriaging. And, and here's how the concept of the channel was birthed. When I was a kid, I used to watch the Wonder Twins. I'm not sure if you watched the Wonder Twins. It was this cartoon, Saturday morning cartoons were the best. And, and the Wonder Twins were a brother and a sister that had these powers and what would happen with the Wonder Twins is by themselves, they had powers, but when they would fist bump, that was, by the way, like in the early 80s, that's when fist bumps became really popular. They would say Wonder Twin powers activate. Then they had this superpower. We decided that we need to encourage marriages to combine their uh, gifts, their talents, their abilities, and not just be two people that are living under one roof, but as the Bible said, they, the two needed to become one and they could live out their oneness superpower. And that's why we started this YouTube channel. Uh, quite honestly, that's not our idea. It's plagiarized. You know where it comes from? It comes from this book. Uh, it comes from the Bible. This idea of oneness superpower, this idea of community, of a collective body of believers. The, the, the Bible would say the church, 
That's what some people would consider a building with a ceiling and seats and people come sit down. But the Bible would call the church the people, the us, we're the church. If you're listening to this and, and you have a relationship with the Lord, you're the church. It's not a place you go, it's who you are. And it, the Bible would call the church a body. And, and, and the author of Corinthians, it's, it's, it's this book in the Bible, it's a letter that was written to a church in Corinth. His name was Paul and he was a traveling pastor and he saw the value and the significance and the importance of unity in such a powerful way that he in fact had to write to this church in terms that they would understand. I wanna read that for you. And then we're gonna look at a Bible, a Bible story that emulates this or illustrates this better than I think any other Bible story, All right? You guys might wanna help this man out, I don't know, yeah. And so I'm gonna read this for you out of 1 Corinthians. If you are taking notes or if you're into taking notes, you can write down these two words and you're gonna, I'm gonna remind you of these two words for the rest of our time together. It's oneness superpower. Oneness, superpower, two words. How do you spell oneness? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Just give it a shot. You'll get it right. Oneness, superpower. And I want to read for you a biblical picture of what oneness, superpower, our unity looks like. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20, 12 through 27, we read this. By a traveling pastor who's encouraging the church. He says, the human body has many parts but the many parts make up one body. So it is the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews and some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free, but we all have been baptized into one Christ body and one spirit. And we have all received the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am only an ear and not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Suppose the whole body were one eye, then how would we hear? Or if your whole body was just one big ear, then how would you smell? But God made our bodies with many parts and he has put each part just where he wants it. What a strange thing a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but one body. Skipping down to verse 25, we read this. You guys wanna help that guy out. I'm just saying. This makes harmony, in verse 25, we read this. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other equally. If one part suffers, then all parts suffer. And if one part is honored, then all parts are glad. In verse 27, we read, now all, now all of, of us together are Christ's body and each one of you is a separate and necessary part of it. Hey friends, I wanna tell you today, if you can hear my voice wherever you are, and it, it, this, this goes for if you're a female, a male, if you're young, if you're old, if you're rich, if you're poor, whatever shade of brown is on your skin. If you do this very simple thing, according to the Bible, according to Romans chapter nine, verse 10, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are part of this family of God. You're part of a, of, of a body. And not only are you a piece of the body, but you are a very, very significant piece of the body. Help that man out, he's about to pass out. I wanna tell you something, oneness superpower, oneness superpower is understanding this. Oneness superpower is activating your gifts, your talents, all that you are, to in fact infuse help or encouragement to a brother or sister, you're part of a body. Even if you feel like you're insignificant, I'm gonna tell you something today, you're significant. Uh, I know that it's, it's been, for, for the past 18 months, there's been all sorts of reasons for us to divide. I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. <laughs> Politically, socially, economically, I mean, even in, in sickness and, and in health, there's division. I read this stat in USA Today that there was, they're gonna record in 18 months, 
over 150,000 deaths, but these are the kind of deaths, 150,000 deaths of despair. I never knew that was a thing, deaths of despair. But according to USA Today, deaths of despair come through isolation, separation, addiction, domestic violence, and self-destruction. 150,000 of those deaths in, eight, in just 18 months. Um, there's division, separation. How many of you enjoy watching the animal planet as much as I do? I, I love watching. I just am fascinated by these animals and their behavior. And, and inevitably, when you see a, a whole pack of wolves or lions, a den, and then you see the deer, the gazelle, and, and they're running for their lives together collectively, and one gets a little slower than the others or strays away, uh, what happens? I mean, you can guess that guy's a goner. Uh, they say in a, in, a, in a herd, you don't have to be the fastest in the herd. You just have to be faster than the guy behind you. And, and, and this is, is exactly what's happened. It's actually, it's not funny at all. It's, it's terrifying. And, and, and what, what it looks like according to one wise king in Ecclesiastes is this. It says, he says, two are better than one because they have a better return on their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him back up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Uh, the, my, my wife is, is like constantly cold and I'm constantly hot. And she will tell you in the middle of the night when she's cold, she just like smothers me and I'm like dripping sweat and she's comfortable. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves and a cord of three, you can't break. The problem is that some of you are hearing my voice and right now, as you're hearing my voice, you're alone. Uh, and you weren't meant to be alone. You, you were not created to be alone. And, and literally, maybe you're saying, I don't need anybody. I'm good. I, I'm not fighting depression or sadness or whatever. He needs help. I want to tell you today that you may not be as good as what you think you are. Uh, and, and in fact, you, you might have gifts and talents and abilities, and that's fantastic. But when you get stuck in a pinch or when, when your arms give way, you're going to need somebody. Uh, one of the stories in scripture that's, that's one of my favorite, and it illustrates this oneness superpower better than I think any other story. It's a very interesting and unique story. And you may have read it or maybe you just breezed by it, but it's, it's, it's hilarious, actually. Uh, you find this story in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. Uh, so let me give you some context. You have God that says to Moses, Moses is the leader of, of the entire nation of Israel. That, that now they're exiled and they're living, they're living in the desert and, and they're on their way to the promised land. And he tells, these, he tells this leader, the, the, the guy who is in charge, Moses, Moses, uh, the, the Amalekites are going to come against you. So I want you to send Joshua. He led the armies. And, and I want you to take tell Joshua to take all of his men and go down in the valley and fight this battle. So Moses says, yes, I will do that. Tells Joshua, uh-oh, you guys better jump in there. <laughs> he says, I, I, I'm going to have you then be up on the hill, Moses, and I'm going to send helpers for you. And Moses thought, okay, great. Exodus chapter 17, verse eight. Here's where we pick up the story. And, and this, is, this is the best ever. It says, the Amalekites came and attacked Israelites. And Moses said to Joshua, choose one of your men and go out. Choose, let me start that over. Choose some of your men and go fight the Amalekites tomorrow. See, I, I can't even talk clearly by myself. And I'm a pretty good talker. I need help. So Joshua fought the Amalekites and Moses had, as Moses had ordered. And Moses... Aaron and her, a guy named her. I'm just saying for the record, that's not a good name to name your, your young boys. If you're pregnant right now with a, with a boy, don't, don't choose her. That's messed up. So you got the, the Amalekites fighting Joshua and his mighty men. Then you have Moses and then the vice Moses, which was Aaron and some guy named her went up to the top of the hill. And in verse 11, we read, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. 
When Moses' hands grew tired, they took stones. Who's, the, who's they? It's, it's Aaron and it's her, a guy named her. I don't know. Not a good name. And it said, Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other. And his hands remained steady until sunset. That's all day long. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll. Write this on a scroll. Uh, something to be remembered and to make sure Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalekites from under the heavens. Moses built an altar on that day and called it, and, and called it the Lord is my banner. And he said, for hands have lifted up the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. You have these characters. Jump in there, guys. You have the general. That's Joshua. You have the army. And then you have this, the president, if you will, of their country. That was Moses. And the assistant president, that was Aaron. And then some guy named Her. Uh, maybe some of you have been watching and you've been so distracted with what's happening behind me that you haven't really heard a word I said. Uh, this, is, this is my son, actually. This is Elisha. And uh, he's been holding up that staff. And we'll say it's a roughly 20-pound staff. <laughs> and then he has all these friends behind him. Uh, I don't know uh, if you're watching and maybe you recognize, maybe you're from San Diego, you recognize one of your friends up here. But you know who we have behind us? Uh, we have a, ju a junior in high school and a Polynesian dancer and a leader. And we have an eighth grader, not only just an eighth grader, but a drummer who's an eighth grader, also a dancer, Polynesian dancer, right? And a skater. Uh, and we have a junior in high school who's a skater and a surfer, basketball, basketball player, and has cool hair. I'll never be able to have hair like that. I'm really jealous. And then we have a freshman in college, a freshman in college and a leader and a surfer. Skate? Skate. Are you single? Yeah, single, not married. And we have this guy, my son. You can have a seat. Okay, and all together, why don't you guys go take his staff and remove that staff from him. Just take it out of his hands and you can drop. We've been going for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. How do you feel? Tired. He's tired. Yeah. Yeah. You're sweating. I'm sweating, yeah. <laughs> it's a workout. Oh, yeah. It's a workout. Uh, I, I want you to understand that God could have in his vast power and authority and his infamous wisdom, he literally could have snapped his fingers. And in a moment, the Amalekites would have literally dropped dead. Dropped dead. Done. Finished. But God did not do that. He made it so that at the time, the leaders of the nation of Israel and the entire nation of Israel and the entire army would remember that no matter how strong they are, how powerful they are, how gifted they are, that alone and by themselves and isolated, they're sitting ducks, that they need each other. Hey, friends and family, do you know you need each other? This silly illustration is, is, is an example of that. Thanks, you guys, by the way. Uh, I, I wish that uh, you could hear, but uh, all of our friends and family on the other side of this camera, they're going nuts right now there. And they're like, good job. So uh, if you can, wherever you are uh, in your home, just give it up. Just clap for my friends here. Way to go, you guys. You can take off. Thanks for helping me with this. Uh, you can keep that log as a souvenir. It's yours. <laughs> I love it that the Lord does not allow us to get away with not being who we were created to be. He doesn't. In fact, I want to tell you, some of you right now, you didn't even know that you were created for a purpose, and you are. Uh, you didn't even know that you were significant, and you are. You didn't know how important you were, but you are. Do you know in Psalms 139 that the, the king, David, wrote these words? He said, Lord, your thoughts of me, your thoughts of me are more vast, which means they're more than the grains of sand on the seashore. I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to be on a beach, but the grains of sand on a seashore, you can't count them. They're endless. And that's God's thoughts for you. David says, when I wake up in the morning, you're there. It's as though God's just waiting, saying, man, I, I love you. You're amazing. You're awesome. He's just hovering over your bed. Some of you might find that creepy. It's not. It's beautiful. 
Do you know that, that God thinks about you? Do you know that God, it says also in that same Psalm, that same, that same passage of scripture, David says, do you know that all my days were ordained before me? That I, I literally have a book that was written about me. I'm gonna tell you friends and family, even if you right now are saying, I don't need God, he loves you. And he created you for a purpose. And not only did he create you for a purpose, but he created you to be one with your brother and your sister, not divided, not alone, not a lone ranger, not a superhero that's gonna come and save the day. There's no superheroes in Christianity. You, you know, I, I saw this illustration. I saw this, this whole oneness superpower illustrated in, in one of the most beautiful illustrations I think I've ever, ever seen. And it happened to me and my family, my son who was just up here and, and my daughter. Uh, we have a daughter who's eight and her name is Shiloh, our son, he's 20. He was up here. He's, he's starting his junior year at San Diego Christian College. He's, he's a, a, a baseball player. He's a collegiate athlete. He's a surfer and he loves his sister. And, and once you know it, being 12 years apart, and by the way, that's not good family planning. If you, if you did the math and you're like, wow, she's eight, he's 20, that's 12 years apart. No, we're not gonna have a child every 12 years. It's a terrible idea. We're just gonna stop. Uh, he, she, he, he is her role model and she wants to be just like him. And so obviously she wants to surf because he surfs. And so he taught her. Uh, I, I was up on the hill uh, by where we live and, and overlooking these two as they paddled out into the surf and it happened to be a medium sized surf for my son, but for our daughter who was just about three and a half feet tall and seven years old at the time, it was a ginormous day. He takes her out into this big day for her, average day for him, and he and her are both great swimmers, so I'm not worried, and I'm up on a hill, and I have a camera because I want to capture the whole thing. And, and wouldn't you guess it that in a split second, the three to four foot surf had these set waves that came in that maybe were five feet to a three and a half year old. That's crazy. I brought some pictures just so you can see. And, and so as you tune in to these pictures, you're, you're not going to see me. You're just going to see these pictures. This is my daughter. And this is her as she goes to catch a wave. She's riding down the face of the wave. And before you know it, the wave overcomes her. She loses her balance. And she is eaten alive by this five-foot wave. Five-foot wave and she's gone. I'm up on the hill and I just see the, the mound of water, the wall of water behind her engulf her and she disappears into the foam. Now, she's, she's a good swimmer, so I'm not too worried. It's a pretty big day though and she's out there and I, I'm counting. I can't do anything really about it. My son's with her. It's about 50 yards away. And, and if, for those of you that surf, you would know that once you go and you hit the bottom of the wave from being on the face of the wave and the wall of water engulfs you, that it pulls you back under the, the wave. And then what they call the washing machine effect, it just spins you around until you can finally get to the surface and <gasps> catch your breath. And I usually count as her father. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just pray and I count one, two, three, four, Starting to get nervous, five. But as in good dad fashion, I'm photographing this whole thing and I see her pop up. Moments later, her brother surfs behind her and, and he grabs her and, and together they, he, he gets her into the shore. And then I started photographing what took place next and I, I just wanted to share it with you. This picture, you see my, my son and he's now taking my, my, my daughter's board and she's crying. You can see her face. She was very scared. She's crying. She's she then gets to the shore and he removes both the boards. Now, these are expensive surfboards. I know surfboards are, you know, three, four hundred dollars. But my son's concern is not for the surfboards. In fact, he just throws them on the sand and he picks her up into his arms. Mind you, I'm 100 yards away on a hillside. I can't hear what's happening. And next I see them. They're walking. My, my daughter makes eye contact with me and she gives me the thumbs up. I'm good, Dad. So I went and run down the hill frantically and be the dad, but I wasn't going to anyways, because then I watched my son carry her to a rock and he set her down on a rock. And again, I can't hear what they're saying. I can't hear their conversation, speaking into her, looking into her eyes. And then moments later, I see him sit down on the rock next to her. And they're just sitting, looking out at the ocean. I don't know if they're exchanging words, if they're talking. She's not crying anymore. I know that. And then about 15 minutes goes by and I see this, the most amazing thing. He grabs her surfboard, not his, and he begins to head out into the ocean with just her surfboard and her. 
And you know what happens next is, is, is beautiful. He gets her into the next set that comes in and she's surfing. And this is her on that wave. Uh, that is what we call oneness superpower. That is what Paul would say uh, is a picture of the body. Uh, she's little. She's three and a half feet and he's a big man. And he's a great surfer and she's just learning. And yet he dropped everything uh, to, to put his fun, his enjoyment of the ocean on hold to make sure she was okay. You know, later that afternoon, I asked my son, tell me, you know, obviously I wasn't there, but tell me, what, what did you say? You were down there for a long time. You were looking into her eyes. And what'd you say? He said, I looked at her. I told her, I love you. You're going to be okay. You're fine. And then I said, okay, but then you sat next to her on the rock, right? For like 15 minutes. Did you like pump her up and tell her she could, she was, she could do it? And he said, no. I go, what, what did you say? He goes, nothing. He just looked out into the ocean until I said, okay, let's go back out. Because I knew, Dad, if I didn't get her on a wave in the next 15 minutes, she probably would never go into the ocean again. And you know what she did? She rode the next wave. Is my daughter going to be a champion, world, surf, world champion surfer? Is she going to be on the circuit? I mean, maybe. If you want to sponsor her, that's awesome. Hit me up. But you know what? She will never forget the rest of her life. More so than even if she went on to be a championship surfer and, and, and standing on a platform holding a, a gold ribbon or medal or whatever trophy, she will never forget the time that her brother became one with her, oneness superpower, and gave her the authority to take back what was just ripped away from her, her confidence. Some of you right now, as you're listening to my voice, I, I, I just know you're feeling isolated, alone, lonely, like you're the only human on the planet. You're feeling like God doesn't care. Your church doesn't care. Your friends don't care. You just went through 18 months of fear and trepidation. Maybe you just, you're still full of fear. You don't leave your house. Or maybe, maybe you, you, know, you had a loved one that passed. I had a friend that I lost because of sickness just a few months ago. And you're like, I don't know if I should call someone, if I should... Maybe I'm just going to be here and be sad. You weren't created for that. Friends, family, you were created to be one as a collective one, a oneness superpower that maybe you can handle things on your own temporarily by yourself, but that's not how God created you. And I'm asking you today, this is my one ask of you today. Would you just throw the white flag up? That means you're just giving up. That means you're throwing in the towel. That means, okay, I am no longer going to fight and pursue and chase after being the superhero. I'm going to be like a wonder twin. I might have powers on it in and of myself, but like the wonder twin, I'm going to, I'm going to activate my oneness superpower by being part of a collective, a family, a church, a body, as we read. Because God's not going to let you get away with just going and doing it by yourself, saying, I don't need anybody. He didn't let the Israelite army get away with that thousands of years ago. He didn't let the, the victory lie in the hands of one leader, or one victor. It was collective. And, and the first place that you need to start, quite frankly, some of you, is wherever you are, in whatever time zone you are, uh, whatever screen you're looking at, whatever people you're with, you need to do... Uh, first and foremost, you need to do what God says is, is invite me to have a relationship with you. Because see, he's a gentleman and he's not going to kick down the door of your heart. He wants you to invite him into that place. Uh, what he wants you to do is he wants you to confess with your mouth that, that you're lost without him. And you are, you know that. The Romans tells us in chapter 3 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, no matter who they are. If you were born, and if you're hearing this, you were born... Uh, you've sinned and fallen short of God, which means you need God. So Romans 10, 9 says you, you confess with your mouth that you, you need God. It's confession, right? And, and then you need to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Belief. Well, I don't have proof or evidence exactly uh, because faith, okay, faith comes from belief, not through sight, not by evidence or proof or I'm not sure. I want to do research. So today I want, I want to just encourage you to to, to, to really just accept that Jesus loves you, that you're lost without him, and that you're going to confess you need him. That's first and foremost. We're going to do that. 
Lord, I believe you exist. Uh, I admit I'm a sinner and I'm lost without you. And I confess my sins to you. Come today and start a relationship with me. I want to be in community first and foremost with you. If you said a version of that prayer in your own words or that exact prayer, then immediately, immediately God's spirit lives in you. And now you have a relationship, a community with God. Isn't that cool? Uh, Then then the next thing I want to ask you to do is, is this. Would you please jump into this thing that I described by reading Paul's letter to a church as a body? And you don't need to determine what part of the body you are. God's already done that. My ear didn't decide it was going to be my ear. My mouth didn't decide it was going to be my mouth. God determined all that. And he's already determined your part in this body, wherever you are, in Hawaii, in Africa, in Philippines, in San Diego. But he's not going to make you do anything, family and friends. You got you to take the initiative. I, and, and you can do that very practically, very simply by, by going to this church's website, sdrock.com. And you can find your way around sdrock.com. There's all sorts of ways to get connected. If you live local in San Diego or if you live local by one of our micro churches or micro sites, you can jump in and be part of those communities. Easy. Just go to the website and find it out. Uh, You can text info to 52525. You can text help search Rock Church. Uh, I, I need information to 52525, and you'll get some sort of response, I promise you. And and what we want to do is we want to introduce you to a family that you never knew that you had, that you just actually became part of a moment ago when you said that prayer and and you invited Jesus to be now your friend and be in community with him. Uh, You know, beyond just connecting with the body, would you find your place there, what you do best, what your gifts are, what your talents are. Don't bury those. Don't hide those. I mean, I'm even going to ask you to go as far as, uh, as, as, as give your gifts, your treasure. And maybe you have resources that you can utilize to do what you did today. That is grow the body. Add to those folks that are isolated, those, those members of this body that don't even know that they're loved and that they're seen and that God not only loves them and sees them, but, but created them for a purpose, for a heavenly purpose, for a bigger purpose than they can even wrap their brains around. And you have resources. You have a building. You have finances. You have talents and treasure in any capacity that, that you say, you know what, I can utilize this to get that word out. Stop 150,000 plus deaths in 18 months of people who lost hope and gave up hope and threw in the towel. You, you can help us stop that. I say us as in the church, you. I don't even mean us. I mean, you can help you, the church. Uh, and in a minute, I'm, I'm going to actually just pray and, and end our service. And uh, I, I do want to say, if, if you actually had that conversation with the Lord for the first time through my voice, you can text SAVED. Again, that number is 252525. Five, two, five, two, five. And you can also text give to five, two, five, two, five. Or you can go to sdrock, as in San Diego rock.com and find your way at sdrock, San Diego rock.com. And you can find ways to get in groups. You can find ways to give time, talent, and treasure. You can find ways to financially give, to physically volunteer all over the world, by the way, not just here in San Diego, where I'm speaking from. And you can find that long lost family that you never knew existed. Man, I I, I don't know what to do other than just to to beg. Can I beg you to do that? In particular, if you're one of those folks that are lonely and sad and tired and ready to throw in the towel, would you please, I beg you, would you please reach out? In fact, if you're watching on our, our Facebook or if you're part of our YouTube channel or any other social media channel, there's a chat going on as you're watching this. Would you just say help in the chat? Help. And someone will jump off of the chat and have a private conversation with you. Man, we have got to be one together. We are going to activate our oneness superpower. We have to, family. We have to. So please, I'll stop begging. And I'll just start praying. 
So would you pray for, with me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just keep my eyes open when I pray, which might be weird if you're watching me pray, but don't watch me pray. But I like to keep my eyes open because I like to envision on the other end of that camera are men and women and children of all size, shape, color, economic status that speak all sorts of languages. And, and, and I just want to pray for you. And so I'm going to keep my eyes open. Don't be freaked out. God, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters, my family that live all across this globe that you have created to be one, that you have created to combine their gifts, their talents, what they do well, what they don't do well, and bring those all together to be one. It's a oneness superpower. And God, we know that your church, if we activate our oneness superpower, will be the light of the world, will be the hope of this planet, will be the salt, the flavor that this planet, this world so desperately needs. We know that, God. And you know who else knows that, God? is the devil. And he's listening to me pray right now to you. But I'm not even going to acknowledge him because he's all about division and dissension and causing strife and brother against brother and believer against believer. He causes husband against wife. Sons against fathers, daughters against mothers. And we rebuke that in Jesus' name. And we declare supernatural oneness, superpower, super oneness power, God, we pray. And I declare over my friends and my family who are hearing my voice on the other end of this camera, wherever they are. And I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, friends and family, we're, I, I hope that you didn't make this a habit every week to jump in on one of the platforms so you can catch worship and worship together with your church family, your church family, your us, and, and get a word from, from one of the pastors here. Our senior pastor, Miles, is typically the one delivering, but anyone delivers the word. Would you just make that a habit? And I think you're going to be blessed for, by it and for it. And God bless you. I don't know if, if I can say this and, and you really receive it, but would you receive this? I love you. I know you're like, you don't know me. Yep, but I love you. You're my family. God bless you. Bless you. That was such a powerful, powerful sermon. Well, family, before we wrap up, we want to remind you that we have an online weekly bulletin available if you want to learn more about upcoming events. You can visit sdrock.com slash Sunday Bulletin or text the word Bulletin to 52525 to get access. I know I saw some really cool events on there. Oh, speaking of cool events, one of those opportunities is the Women's Conference coming up on September 18th called The Feast. The Feast. <laughs> There's going to be an online conference that is designed to, experience, to be experienced in community around a table. We're really encouraging all women get together and gather around a table, whether it's a coffee table, a picnic table, a park table, a TV tray, what ifs, right? Get around a table, get together, and feast on the Word of God together. Last year, when we had our women's conference, it was the biggest online conference we've had. So please text FEAST to 52525 for more information. Yeah, one other thing we want to make you aware of is the Rock School of Ministry mm. starting new classes at the end of August. There's so many cool classes and opportunities on there for everyone. Whether you want to do a deeper dive in theology and be better equipped to serve, or whether you desire to go to seminary one day. Oh. Cool thing is you can take these classes online from anywhere in the world. So if you want to learn more, take the first step towards being equipped in ministry, visit rockschoolofministry.com or text RSOM to 52525. Yes. Well, church, see you next week. Please be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms at The Rock San Diego and head over to our YouTube channel for more rock messages and content. We love you so much, family. We hope to see you next week. Hi, I'm AJ, the director of The Rock School of Ministry. The Rock School of Ministry began in 2010 with the goal of equipping leaders for ministry. In alignment with this purpose, we've designed three all-new affordable certificate programs geared towards inspiring, developing, and empowering women and men to be pastors and church leaders for the expansion of the global church. Our new Bible, theology, leadership, and practical ministry classes start on August 30th and are available in person and online. Are you ready to be activated for a lifetime of ministry? For more information, visit sdrock.com slash RSOM or text RSOM to 52525.